Hey, welcome back. If you're new to the series, I typically review old school video games. The way I see it, the professional critics got the modern front covered, I can handle the older stuff. But it's 2014. The Xbox One and the PS4 and the Wii U have been out for a while now, which means the previous generation is officially old school. So as far as I'm concerned, it's open season on PS3, Xbox 360, and the Wii generation of games. And what an interesting generation it was. I was so happy to see games like Spec Ops The Line and The Walking Dead get the recognition they did. It was great seeing games like these challenge the medium and its audience. But let's not get carried away here. It was also a great time for video game ass video games. Saints Row 3 and 4, 50 Cent Blood in the Sand, let's not delude ourselves. Video games are still at their best when they're fucking dumb. The previous generation showed that there's room in this world for the likes of Depression Quest, Parodius, and Gone Home, but let's not pretend we don't sometimes have an insatiable need for games that get all the way dumb. Games that are contrived in a way only a video game can be. And when I think of games that harbor no interest in being more than mindless stupid fun, Usually the first thing that comes to my mind is Earth Defense Force. And no, I don't mean Super Earth Defense Force for the Super Nintendo. That's different, and no one cares about that game. This is a battle for humanity. We all pray for your success. The Earth Defense Force games, at least the few that came out here in North America, are simply a treat. With incredibly simple gameplay that's self-aware enough to know how to play to its strengths, and a gilded sheen of unabashed schlock and camp without ever the need to be crass, Earth Defense Force is some of the most unadulterated fun you can have with a video game. There are three and a half games currently available in the US, though I will only be talking about one today. Still, all three strive to deliver a special stripe of addictive power fantasy ridiculousness. A dedication to a remarkable sense of scale, gargantuan skirmishes with humongous weapons and even bigger enemies, and hilarious tongue-in-cheek dialogue create an experience that more than compensates for its numerous technical shortcomings. Yes, these games are far from perfect, and make no mistake, EDF ain't for everyone. While the core concept of big guns and big bugs is incredibly well done, there really isn't much more to it than that. But EDF is dumb and cheesy and too damn proud of it to care what you think of it. And it is this unshakable confidence that makes Earth Defense Force special. These games know what they are and what they want to be. This is your childhood action fantasy come to life. The mega monster movie you always wanted to be in. The first game to see release in North America, Earth Defense Force 2017 is actually the third entry in the Chikyu Boy Goon series. The first two for the PS2 never came out in North America, though they did come out in Europe, and the second game was re-released for the Japanese PSP, a system by the way that is not region locked. But back to North America, EDF 2017 was released exclusively for the Xbox 360 in March of 2007 as a $40 budget title. A smart move as North America was still wrapped up in the majesty of the first years of war, and such a graphically and technically inferior game was probably a tough sell at the standard 60 bucks. The Xbox 360 was only about a year and a half old, and EDF 2017 did not really scream next generation. But the game received some of the nicest average reviews you'll ever see. Critics took the game to task for its bland graphics, awful frame rate, lackluster sound and music, lack of online or system link multiplayer, and what I personally found most damning, the absence of an autosave. Yet, they couldn't put it down. Much like the sequel that I'll talk about next time, EDF 2017 is a very shallow game with a ton of problems, but it was still given praise because it does one thing exceedingly well. It throws you into some of the most colossal firefights you've ever seen, with some of the most powerful weapons you've ever used. EDF 2017's triumphs as an action game are numerous, but subtle, so let me break it down. First is the sense of scale. This has less to do with how big things are, but how huge the draw distance is. Hundreds of giant ants aren't threatening if you can't see them, but 2017's levels stretch for what feels like miles, and though early in the game your view is obstructed by buildings, the later and more difficult levels place you in a veritable wasteland where enormous armies of robots, dropships, ants, and spiders choke the horizon. This beautifully matches with the range and power of your weapons. 
rockets, shotguns, sniper rifles, turrets. With over 150 weapons and a dozen classes, EDF 2017 leaves you outnumbered but never outgunned. Huge plumes of green or yellow bug blood cloud your vision, well-placed explosions send bugs soaring hundreds of feet into the air, and the way robots and dropships explode and come crashing down is poetry in motion. 2017 works because its combat is enormously satisfying. And 2017 wisely supports the action by making sure nothing gets in the way of the fun. There is no penalty for destroying buildings or killing your teammates, and you literally cannot hurt innocent bystanders. Ammunition management is non-existent as all but a few special weapons have unlimited ammo. You instead must pay close attention to each gun's stats like clip size, fire rate, and reload times. Ahead of Borderlands by several years, 2017 has a fairly impressive loot system for its time when such things typically only appeared in RPGs. You're only allowed two weapons in your loadout, so choosing the right pair of firearms takes careful consideration, but with so much variety, it can match any playstyle. Though how you collect new weapons and increase your HP is a bit archaic, but I'll save that for later. 2017's incredible draw distance and battlefields are enormous, however the threat of the alien invaders is very real. Enemies are extremely mobile and pack their own impressive firepower. Ants roam in huge packs and quickly overwhelm. Spiders can leave several city blocks with ease, and robots rain death from above with incredible accuracy miles away. Dropships and underground burrows need to be eliminated as quickly as possible, or enemies will continue to pour out. If you see it, you better kill it immediately, because if it sees you, it'll be right in your grill in a few seconds. Co-op is a must on some of these levels. EDF 2017 becomes insanely hard on the higher difficulty levels. Also, this video game about giant bugs and robots attacking the Earth doesn't waste your time with a story. Through the game's 53 levels, you're treated to what is essentially a radio drama with the best cornball dialogue you've ever heard, chronicling EDF forces all over the world either conquering or falling at the hands of the alien invaders. The quote-unquote story is seldom more than an update on which Earth nations have fallen and which are still standing, but that's perfect. No characters, not even a main character, no real story arc to speak of, not even a motive for the alien invasion. It's even more pointless than Titanfall's story, but 2017 never pretends to be a game where such things would matter. And EDF 2017's ironclad resolve is felt even here. Radio transmissions and dialogue spouted by your fellow EDF soldiers is delivered with impeccable earnestness. Let's give these Ravagers a welcome they'll never forget! Yeah! It's an army of red giants! From now on, I'll stay with you in Storm 1. Please help! Somebody help us, please! Those weapons are way too powerful! Good cheesy dialogue is hard to write and even harder to perform, and in its own dumb way, EDF 2017's voice work is pitch perfect and incredible. An incredible number of gunships are about to swoop into the city! While the Japanese team deserves credit for concocting this crazy game, the American team expertly walked that tightrope between joyously corny and just lame, creating one of the funniest games you'll ever play. It's all so good and comes together so harmoniously, it doesn't matter that the frame rate drops to single digit territory when things get especially bonkers. Who cares that it only looks marginally better than a PS2 game? The lack of online is a bummer, but the split screen functions well enough. One thing that actually bogs the game down though is the player progression. Slain enemies drop items like health, armor, and weapons. Now, health is health, but armor is HP. You are awarded one additional boost to your max HP at the end of each level for every armor token collected. So instead of some kind of scoring system that rewards kills or a combo system of some kind, you have to run around and pick up your HP increases. As mentioned before, levels become incredibly hard on higher difficulties. Leveling up is extremely important, but it's a bit of a chore running around and picking them all up. And the same goes for the weapons, they have to be picked up. And to make things worse, you won't know what weapon you picked up until you finish the level, and it's often stuff you already have. You're encouraged to try out the Harder and Inferno difficulties because that's where the best weapons are kept, which is great for gated progression, but the game becomes so incredibly difficult that even the first level on Inferno is something you probably won't be able to complete until you finish the campaign a couple of times. But these could be chalked up to design choices, conscious decisions by the developers. Whatever the reason, this is how they wanted their game to be, and truth be told, all this stuff ain't so bad, and it makes for an excellent podcast game. 
No, the truly awful thing about EDF 2017 is the lack of an autosave. Even in 2007, this was inexcusable. I mean, let's say you've been playing the game for a few hours. You've unlocked a couple awesome guns, beat a couple super hard levels, and added a couple hundred points to your max HP. You think, because this isn't a PlayStation 2 game, you can just turn it off and come back later. But if you don't go to the save menu and manually save your game, you will lose everything you've achieved that day. It's a mistake you only make once, but it's a mistake that shouldn't even be possible. Of the game's numerous problems, this is the one that's completely unforgivable. Another minor complaint may be that there's so much game here. Five difficulty levels means you're expected to complete the game's 53 levels five times through. Yes, that means beating the game on normal does not clear it on easy. Five times through. Which, for such a simple game, makes for a super high risk of burnout. It also technically means I have not played it to completion. Though, on a personal note, I bought EDF 2017 before I actually owned an Xbox 360. The footage taken for this review is my third time through the game, but the first time on my own 360. Having put well over 100 hours into this game over the years, I feel like I'm qualified to review it. The American-made sequel, Insect Armageddon, I've unfortunately spent less time with than I'd like to. I don't think you have to beat a game 100% to be qualified to review it, but next time, I'm going to get the expert on the phone, and we're going to talk about Insect Armageddon. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Squash some bugs, boys! If you don't want to die, keep shooting! Come this way and I'll kill you! I'm out of ammo! Come Yeah, you're welcome! Die! Just a scratch! Just a scratch! Just a scratch! Just a scratch! I'm gonna fight by you till I drop, sir! It's those bugs again! I think they're attacking civilians! I'm going in! It's you! The enemy robots are equipped with new weapons! Our unit's been hit badly! The Silver Robots! They're destroying our town! Please, help us! Ah! It's time to show that beast what the what EDF is, is made of! Yeah! Yeah!